Guys, I screwed up. I thought I've been doing this fatherhood thing right, but it turns out I've been wrong all along. Here are five things that I've been doing wrong in my life, in my marriage as a father, and five things I'm gonna do to improve it. Hear me out, let's jump into this. So I was uh, listening to John Lovell in the Warrior Poet Society, one of his podcasts the other day, and he had a guy on, his name is John Rosemond. Um, He made one of these statements that was pretty profound for me. I was kind of wondering why my wife was more frustrated with me over time and wondering what was going on and listening to this just completely changed the game for me. So this is a little bit more raw, um, a little bit more direct than I usually am in these videos. So again, I hope you hear me out and maybe this will help you out as well. One of the things that uh, John Roseman said specifically, and I found an article that I'll post in the description below that said, a father's primary job is not to spend as much time with his kids as reality will allow. It is to show his sons how to properly treat a woman and show his daughters what to look for in a man, period, end of description. So I started diving deeper into this thinking, well, gosh, I mean, I, I feel like I'm a good husband. I feel like I do that, but then I started thinking a little bit deeper. Am I more focused on my children or am I more focused on my wife's needs? So I started reading a little bit deeper and um, basically what John said is, my general finding has been that when a husband gives more attention to his kids than he does his wife, the kids begin treating her with disrespect. They ignore her, demand of her, talk back to her, refuse to obey her. They disrespect her because the dad has his priorities out of whack. He's in more of a relationship with them than he is with her. As such, they have become dad's quasi-equals. That diminishes mom's status and the kids talk to her as if she was a servant. Does that sound familiar? Are you one of those where you kind of take your kid's side, where you try to keep the peace by oftentimes going towards your kids and ignoring your wife? That's me. That's what I've been doing with my three kids, eight, six, and three, for years now. And I just now realized by reading and listening to John Rosemond that I've been doing it wrong all along. So when I look into this, I think about the five things that I've been doing specifically with my kids, with my wife, that have brought me down this path. And here are the five things that I've been doing. Tell me if you think this is something that you do as well when you're talking and working and acting around your wife and your kids. The first thing that I would usually do is I would take my kid's side in front of her. There's something that's going on, there's a decision that needs to be made no matter how mundane, and we're talking about it in front of the kids, and rather than taking my wife's side first, I take the kid's side, thinking that it will help to alleviate the crying situation that will inevitably result. That's not the right thing to do. If I take the kid's side, it undermines my wife, and now she is the bad person in front of all of the kids directly and that is causing a rift and it's causing challenges and stresses for my wife in particular. Number two, I hug and kiss my kids and not show the same affection to my wife first and first thing in the morning. My wife and I, we have a busy morning. Your wife and you, you have a busy morning. You're trying to get kids out out of the house. You go to your kids first and take care of all their needs while ignoring your wife, getting her a cup of tea, getting her some coffee, giving her a hug saying, how did you sleep? That's what I did, that's what I do, and that's something that's really causing a challenge specifically for her. Number three, I let my kids talk first, allowing them to interrupt her. When she's trying to make a point, or when she's trying to have a conversation and one kid interrupts her, I focus my attention on the kids to see what they have to say rather than stopping them and having them wait for my wife to talk. Number four, I focus my attention and actions on the kids' needs, thinking I was being helpful to her, right? So focusing on what the kids need, they need to go outside, they need to um, have a snack, they need to have somebody play with them, they need all of these different things, so I stop what I'm doing to help them, while at the same time, when my wife has something that she needs to be done at the same time, I focus on them first and not her, and that causes additional stress and rift between her and I and between her and the kids, and the kids see it and they believe it, and that's a significant challenge. Number five, I lost sight of the affection we share for each other before the kids. John Roseman talks a lot about this, and I have a couple other quotes. 
our affection, our marriage, everything that came out of birthing these children happened way before they came around. So I am losing sight of giving her that affection, what we had before kids first, and then having the kids come second. And that's a pretty significant challenge. And it's resulted in her feeling unappreciated, worn thin, and stressed. And it's not right, and I need to do something to change it. So I started reading a little bit more from John Roseman in this article. He talks a lot about the things that are, are challenging. Um, you know, as I was focusing on this, in my haste to be a good dad, I've inadvertently been teaching my two boys that they are the center of the universe and that they and I and my wife are there to serve their every need. And that is not what John Roseman says that we should be doing. He says nothing, repeat, nothing puts more a more solid foundation of well-being under a child's feet than the knowledge his parents are in a committed relationship that transcends their individual relationships with him. Repeat, nothing. The husband absent home, he says, one in which an adult male is present but has pledged allegiance to his kids, is as much if not more of a problem than a father absent home. It's about more of a problem because it, no one talks about it. It's invisible, ubiquity, sustained by silence. The father who thinks he's doing a great job by focusing wholly on his kids, even to try to assist his wife, is causing more of a rift and more of a challenge between the kids and how they perceive their mother than me focusing specifically on her, and that's a profound challenge. After reflecting on this, after diving deeply, after giving this confession to you, I've decided on five things that I'm going to try to do to alleviate this challenge that I've started for my wife and for my kids to try to improve upon this because I'm a dad of three always trying to improve. So here's what I'm going to do. Number one, I'm going to display way more public affection in front of my kids with my wife. When she comes down in the morning, I'm going to give her a big hug, a big kiss. I'm going to ask her genuinely how she slept, how she's feeling, and what I can do to help her in the morning. Number two, I'm going to go to bat for her and her needs in front of the kids. So when she has a rough day, when she is trying to help out with dinner or help out with morning work or homework, I'm gonna to go to bat for her, see what she needs, so I can specifically help her out, showing the kids that she is more important and her actions and activities are more important than what the kids are going through right now, that we are that united front. Number three, I'm going to try to ease her burdens more, whether it's just doing the little things, right? Um, the things that I typically overlook. Trying to keep the living room tidy. I try to clean up after the day is done. I'm gonna try to continue to clean up during the day. Um, get the honeydew list done sooner. I'm going to try to do the things that will ease the burdens on her genuinely so I can help to facilitate an ease of um, mom activities through the day because they have such an incredibly hard job. Number four, I'm gonna show the kids that she is number one and the number one hierarchy in the house. I'm gonna go back to when we were just us, pre-kids and how I would focus on her, I would um, appreciate her and all of the things that she did, showing that to my children that she is just as important and that I can help her out. That way, when I show her that she's number one, they will have an appreciation for the fact that we are a united front in helping to raise them, and they won't think of her as much as a slave to them in the activity that they have. And number five, this will be a fun one, more date nights. I'm gonna spend the money, I'm gonna bring more babysitters in, we're gonna try to have more one-on-one -on -one time so that we can support each other. My wife's turning 40 this year, don't tell her I said that on YouTube, but we're gonna go to Napa, we're gonna stay at the Four Seasons in Napa, and it's just gonna be the two of us, and we're going to enjoy that time. The big trips are great, I'm also gonna to try to do the small things where we can enjoy time together alone on date night. So those are the five things that I'm gonna to try to do. And that's how I'm gonna to try to improve upon things. But I have a couple more quotes that really hammer this home for me and why I think this is such important for you and I to discuss and think about being better fathers vis-a-vis -vis being better husbands to our wives. John says, a father does an invaluable service to his kids by opening doors for their mother, listening and speaking to her with the utmost of respect, sharing and easing her burdens, going to her first when he comes home from work, hugging her, 
kissing her and asking, how was your day, babes? Uncomplicated stuff like that is what counts. This shift will instill lessons into my boys to be better men and to my daughter to know what to expect from the man in their life. God help me, my three-year-old will get there soon and I'm really afraid by that. So this is my confession to you. You know, I heard this. I'm going to dive more deeply into John Roseman's book. I'm going to think about this subtle shift in how I interact with my wife so that I can be a better father. I still believe being a father, being an intentional father, is one of the most important things that we can do, especially raising sons in this effeminate age where sons and men are not supposed to be men. But... That is where I need to focus on my wife first so that they can see what the model man does and how he treats a woman so that we can move forward from there. So what have you been doing to withdraw that bank account from your wife and not support her as much? Put it in the comments below. Let's you and I have this conversation and help to facilitate a conversation with our fellow men and our fellow dads in this community. And more importantly, let's talk about what other things other than my five list that you're gonna do potentially to help change how you parent by being a better husband. I think this is a great topic, a great discussion. This is my confessional for you today. This is me wanting to be a better father by being a better husband. And I would love for you to continue to join me on this effort. Feel free to subscribe. I've got great content coming. This is for dads who are in the thick of this together. And we're going to grow together. And I hope you join me in this effort. Thanks for joining me today. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks.